It's the late 15th century and England is marred by turmoil and political uncertainty. The Wars of the Roses has caused decades of warfare between rival houses York and Lancaster. Amidst the backdrop of a post-war fatigue, a mysterious figure emerges with an audacious claim to the English throne as one of the princes in the tower, Richard, the Duke of York. Perkin Warbeck was born in 1474 in Tournay, Flanders. Information about his parents and upbringing aren't very well documented. It's said that his father was a local official while his mother was a Flemish woman. The lack of detailed information about his family background adds to the mystery of the story from what was likely humble origins as the son of commoners to his bold claims to be a royal. Warbeck travelled to Cork, Ireland to seek employment as an apprentice to a silk merchant and his resemblance to the young Duke of York who was presumed murdered sparked a series of events that threw him into the political spotlight. Intrigued by this discovery, a group of Yorkist sympathisers, led by John Atwater, proclaimed Warbeck as the rightful heir to the English throne. From 1455 to 1485, a series of civil wars ravaged England. The Wars of the Roses laid the foundation for the saga of Perkin Warbeck. Throughout these years, the houses of Lancaster and York struggled against each other for the control of the English crown. This finally culminated in the Battle of Bosworth in 1485. There's some debate on dates used by historians as in 1487, Henry defeated a Yorkist uprising which supported Lambert Simnel, a 10 year old pretender who was taken as a pupil by an Oxford trained priest named Richard Simon. He tutored the boy in courtly manners and decided he was to become a kingmaker. On the 16th of June in 1487, the rebels clashed with the king's army at the Battle of Stoke Field and were defeated. Simon avoided execution due to his priestly status but was in prison for life. Simnel was pardoned because of his younger years and was merely a puppet who was then put to work in the royal kitchen. From one pretender to another, Perkin Warbeck's claim to be the younger of the princes in the tower sent shockwaves through the political landscape of the 15th century. According to his narrative, he claimed that he was Richard, the Duke of York, the younger of the two sons of Edward IV, who had disappeared from the Tower of London during the Wars of the Roses. This questioned the legitimacy of Henry VII's rule, but also tapped into the suspicions surrounding the disappearance of the royal heirs. This claim challenged Henry's rule as he presented himself as the rightful heir to the Yorkist line. This attracted support from key figures who saw an opportunity to challenge the Tudors, the Tudor monarchy faced not only a military threat, but a threat that if successful, would have rewritten the course of English history. Warbeck found crucial support from influential figures both within England and across Europe, which amplified his claim. Among those backers was Margaret of Burgundy, the aunt of the princes in the tower, who was a staunch Yorkist sympathiser. Margaret provided not only moral support, but also financial assistance and backing for Warbeck's calls from her base in the court of Burgundy. Along with Margaret, Maximilian I, Holy Roman Emperor, and the father of Philip, the Archduke of Burgundy, lent his political weight to the pretender's endeavours, seeing an opportunity to destabilise Tudor England. Various European courts offered their support, including that of James IV of Scotland, seeking to exploit the turmoil for their own advantages. The backing by such influential figures had huge political implications, turning Warbeck's claim into a formidable challenge to the Tudor monarchy. The international support not only fueled military expeditions against Henry VII, but also emphasised the complex web of alliances and rivalries in European politics. In 1495, Warbeck, backed by a force of mercenaries, attempted to invade England to solidify his claim to the throne. The Battle of Blackheath in September of that year stands out as a pivotal moment in his campaign. Though the battle ended in defeat for Warbeck, it did show the intensity of his challenge to Henry VII rule. Undeterred, Warbeck continued his efforts making alliances with English nobles who were discontent with Tudor governance. His interactions with nobility and commoners revealed a complex political landscape showing the varying degrees of his support. Some nobles saw him as a way of challenging the Tudor monarchy, while others remained loyal to the king. Despite the initial setbacks, Warbeck persisted with his invasions, showcasing the nature of their loyalty and politics in England during this period. 
Perkin Warbeck's attempts to secure the English throne ultimately ended in failure. Following the defeat at the Battle of Blackheath in 1495, he sought refuge in Scotland forming an alliance with James IV. The failed invasion strained his relationship with the Scottish King, leading Warbeck to seek asylum in Ireland in 1496. Despite support from Irish nobles, his ambitions were thwarted and he was eventually forced to leave Ireland. Upon leaving Ireland, he found refuge in the court of Maximilian I in the Holy Roman Empire. While in exile, he married Lady Catherine Gordon, securing himself another ally. However, as time passed, Henry VII's diplomatic efforts pressured Maximilian to withdraw his support. In 1497, Warbeck made one last significant effort to reclaim the throne with an attempted landing in Cornwall, but this too ended in failure. Upon being captured, Warbeck confessed to being an imposter and was imprisoned. His presence had stirred political tensions and paranoia in Tudor England, leading Henry to take stricter measures to safeguard his dynasty. While it caused turmoil and tensions within the country, Warbeck's failed attempts to take the throne showed the resilience of the Tudor monarchy. Warbeck's fortunes had taken a sharp downturn after his unsuccessful Cornish rebellion in 1497. After seeking sanctuary at Bewley Abbey, he was eventually handed over to Henry and was imprisoned in the Tower of London. Many of his supporters were arrested including Sir William Stanley, who had initially supported Warbeck and was executed for his involvement. Warbeck himself faced a similar fate as he was executed in 1499. The capture and punishment of Warbeck and his supporters served as a warning against challenging the Tudor dynasty. This solidified Henry VII's hold on the throne, bringing an end to the turbulent chapter of pretender claims in the late 15th century. Perkin Warbeck's claim had a profound impact on the Tudor monarchy, exposing the vulnerability of Henry's reign with challenges to his legitimacy. Historians have offered diverse interpretations of Warbeck's character and motives. Some view him as a mere pawn, manipulated by powerful figures such as Margaret of Burgundy and the Yorkist faction, while others see him as a willing conspirator driven by his personal ambition. The historical consensus is that Perkin Warbeck was an imposter. However, there are several alternative theories about his true identity that persist among historians. The first is that he was telling the truth and he was actually Richard the Duke of York and he survived and was not murdered as traditionally believed. Another was him being a pawn of Margaret of Burgundy who sought to challenge the Tudor monarchy and according to this view, he may not have fully understood the complexities of his claim. A third is a minority viewpoint that suggests he did have a legitimate claim to the throne as an illegitimate son of Edward IV. There's also the idea that there are contradictory historical records and he could be an amalgamation of various individuals at the time with their own similar motives. Perkin Warbeck contributed massively to the dynamics of post-war England after the Wars of the Roses, questioning the legitimacy of the Tudor dynasty. His claim to the throne with his connection to the princes in the tower underscores the lengths to which factions would go to reassert their claims and challenge the traditional narratives of a Tudor succession. His failed attempts and the tightening of Henry VII's grip on power also demonstrates the lengths the Tudors went to to secure their rule. His story offers an understanding of the political landscape, the power struggles and the tensions that defined a transitional period between the Wars of the Roses and the Tudor dynasty. Thanks for watching, please like, share and subscribe to the channel for similar content and I'll see you soon.